fellow scientists, I am Dr. Wei. Salutations, young lab technologist. I'm Dr. Ya. And behind us, we have the incredible Dr. Zeke, aka Dry Bones. So, we are so glad that you have decided to join us once again for this lesson as we go mad for the gospel because today's story is a big one. I'm glad you're wearing your sunglasses because not only is today's story a big one, it's a very bright one. I come prepared all the time. Yes. So we're going to talk about one of my favorite Bible stories. I mean, they're really almost all my favorite, but this one really counts. It is hard to choose a favorite. I know. Because today's story is Jesus is born. Oh, that's a good one. Now, typically we talk about, you know, because everybody knows the story of Jesus is born. We're going to focus on different aspects of the story that we tell when Jesus is born. We're going to think about the sky. Yeah, the sky. So we see that the shepherds were out tending their flocks, taking care of them, middle of the night, pitch black out. You wouldn't need sunglasses you, at night. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't need sunglasses then. But imagine you're sitting there protecting the sheep, keeping them safe, and all of a sudden, the sky lights up brighter than the light of day. I'm gonna need these. Brighter than the moon, brighter than the stars, brighter than the sun. Oh my gosh. And guess who it is? It's the angels oh. with an important announcement. What is that announcement? That Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Jesus is born in Bethlehem. And they came to the shepherds to announce Jesus is born, but it was super bright. Now, if we fast forward the story a little bit further, there's another thing in the sky that we see that led another group of people to Jesus. What do you think that was? Was it the star? It is the star, and the star led the wise men to find Jesus. Now, it's very important that Jesus is born because we needed a savior. Mm -hmm. And so God used the angels to tell the shepherds that Jesus is born. The shepherds got up and ran to Bethlehem. And then they saw the news and they started telling people. And the wise men also came to see Jesus and then tell other people that the Messiah had been born. Because he's the Savior. That's who he, everybody had been waiting for. Jesus saved us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And both of those things started with things that were in the sky. Yes, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's science experiment. So with that being said, it is time for... Science experiment! It is science experiment Yay. time! Yay! And in this story, we were talking about things in the sky that made people know that Jesus was born. Yep. Obviously, we're not going to have an angel around. Nope, and we are also not creating stars. No, we can't have stars because stars are just big balls of gas, so we don't have those either. No. Um, but we are going to pretend in this experiment that something is a star, and we need to keep it up in the sky. And that will tell us that Jesus was born. So for this experiment, you will need a blow dryer. This. Preferably with this <laughs> attachment. We found that this experiment worked the best with this attachment. It's kind of like the little, I don't even know which one you call it. It's to help straighten yeah. and smooth not your diffuser, your hair. it's, it's your other one. Diffuser. Clearly, you didn't straighten or diffuse Tain your hair today. Neither did I. I was going to say, look who's yeah. talking. Maybe Dr. Zeke did. Woo! <laughs> um, so, yes, so you will need a blow dryer and this attachment as well as. A ping pong ball. A ping pong ball. And if you don't happen to have a ping pong ball at home, uh-oh. We lost it. It's trying to get away. <laughs> you can also use a balloon. If for some reason you don't have a blow dryer, you can use a straw, but you're going to need a lot of air if yes. you use a straw. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your blow dryer all plugged in. You're going to turn it on, and you're going to put the ping pong ball there and see if you can keep the ping pong ball in the air. Ready? Oh, good job. I got another one just in case. Ready? Whoa. <laughs> oh. Whoa. There we go. That's a Whoa. Hey. Yeah, I think we finally got it. <laughs> 
All right, there we go. So, scientists, what is happening in this unique instance? It's something called air pressure. Ooh. And I'm going to read this one because this one has a very fancy term. It does and I don't, have a fancy It term. does, and I don't want to mess it up for you scientists, okay? So, air moving at high speed. Like Which is coming dryer, out of yep, our blow dryer. What was coming out of our blow dryer. Has lower pressure lower pressure than air that is still. So like right now, what we're breathing, the at air is still, mm -hmm. but when we force it out of the blow dryer at a high speed, it has, it has the lower, lower pressure. pressure. So when we put the ball in that lower pressure air pocket, it just stayed there while the rest of the air around it was keeping it afloat. Oh, no. I know, right? Kind of crazy. Brilliant. Brilliant, boom, mind blown. <sighs> um, the scientific term for this is Bernoulli's principle. Say that with us, friends. <laughs> Bernoulli's principle. So if you want to know about more about air pressure and those types of things that keep things aloft, Google Bernoulli's principle. <laughs> and also let us know how successful you were in keeping the star in the sky and leading people. Yeah. If you can, <laughs> if you them. can. Um, try to use a timer and tell us how long you're able to keep it up so that yeah. way we know yeah. if we're on the right track. Maybe we should time ourselves we should. and keep it a secret and see if our friends Anybody can beat, can beat, our, beat yeah, our, time. our time. So, all right. Well, with that being said, we thank you for once again joining us as we went mad for the gospel. We'll catch you next time. Bye, friends. Hi, fellow scientists. So after our experiment went a little crazy yesterday, Dr. Ya and Dr. Wei went and found an expert scientist who has mastered this experiment. So Eli is going to do this one for us because he got the ball to balance for a very, very long time. Eli, we're first gonna do it on low and then super high, right? All right, here we go, Eli.